Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about the ABC analysis in order to establish uh, priorities for different item level inventories so that we can uh, have different control measures in place based on those established priorities. So in any organization, manufacturing service firms, you have different types of inventories, right? For example, for an automobile manufacturer, you're going to have some critical inventory item, uh, items which are higher in cost, which has greater value. Uh, for example, your transmission components, engine components, interior, exterior panels, and so on, right? There's going to be some low dollar value items such as fasteners, nuts, and bolts, which will require low level of control, right? So by establishing priorities on these inventory items, we can define different control levels. So inventories of high priority will be tightly controlled, which means we'll be maintaining accurate records, we'll be doing the frequent inventory checks. It needs to make sure that we have accurate demand forecasting for those items so that we can provide right amount and right quality in order to continue the, the, the production process, right? On the other hand, with the lower dollar value items, we will have the lowest priority. And in those cases, we don't need to do the often regular checks, right? Uh, in most cases, companies will like use two bin system or the vendor manage inventories for those items. So the responsibility is given to the vendor in order to do the inventory management. So why we need to have those controls in place? Yes, one thing we want to make sure the critical items are in place, the high item priority items are properly managed. At the same time, if you have same control mechanism for all the items, it's going to increase your overall inventory management costs because you need people, you need staff who are going to collect data, who are going to do the inventory counts, perhaps do the inspections and analyze that, that data, right? So that's why we want to have different level of control or for different types of items, right? So in this, we are not touching on these two items, right? So we'll come back to later in the economic order quantity models. But we're going to, at this point, we only want to classify, right? Uh, the item level inventories into different categories. Okay, so I'm going to jump from here to the Excel sheet. So in this uh, example, we have 10 different items or 10 different parts. And for these parts, we know their annual usage. How do you will get this? You know the, you will get this from the demand data for these particular items, right? So you can look into demand forecasting. You can look into the historical usage of these items. From that, you will know how much quantity we require for each of these parts. Then we have unit cost for each of these components, right? So in the very simple ABC analysis, our decision for, for the classification will be based on the annual usage, which is the unit usage multiplied by unit cost. But in real life, you may have other constraints. You may want to consider lead time. You may have some supplier issues. So those can be brought in as additional factors when you're calculating uh, the, 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 the annual a usage in this case or when you're establishing those inventory management priorities right okay so in order to go ahead with this let's calculate the annual usage here so i'm taking the unit usage and multiplying it with the unit cost so annual dollar usage for i part number one is twenty two hundred dollars so we need 1100 units and each is costing us two dollars so let's apply this across so once we have annual dollar usage calculated now we need to sort this data in ascending order so which means highest to the smallest value so i'm going to select my data for the part numbers and we're going to go to sort and filter uh, custom sort we want to sort it by annual dollar usage from largest to smallest. Now I have the very first part number after sorting is part number two, where we have annual dollar usage as $24,000. So let's add up all these numbers. So we're going to have sum of annual usage for all the items, right? 
And now before we do the classification, let's go ahead and calculate the cumulative usage. So for my part number two, my cumulative usage is going to be $24,000. And for part number five, it's going to be usage for the previous part plus the annual usage for the part number five, so which is 6,000. So as we apply this formula across, so we'll have the cumulative usage being calculated, right? As we move from part number two to five to eight and seven, so on. Okay. And from here, we can calculate the cumulative percentage usage. So in order to calculate the cumulative percentage usage, I'm going to take the cumulative dollar value for each item. So in this case, it's going to be E2 divided by the total annual usage for all items, which is D13. But make sure you use the absolute reference dollar $D, dollar $13. Otherwise, your formula will never be correct as you apply it across. So I'm going to convert this to percentage up to two decimal places. And let's apply this. So as you can see from here, because this is the cumulative percentage, as we reach the last item, the everything is added to 100%. So that's kind of your first checkpoint. If you don't get that 100%, you have made a mistake somewhere, right? So now when it comes to classification, uh, I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint to just kind of highlight this concept. So for classification item A, or uh, we want to classify items as class A, which has around 70 to 80% of value, right? Uh, so because you're not going to get an exact number when you do the ABC classification, it could be 69, sometimes it could be uh, 75, 77, 80, but well, anywhere between 70 to 80% can be classified as as item a so what we expecting that the 20 percent of items will fall under 80 percent of value it could be 30 70 right so that can change then you have item class b which are 30 percent of items around 15 percent of value so in this context i'm uh, in, in this case i'm explaining in relevance of 80 percent right but if you're using 70 percent it could be around 20 percent right and rest, which are around 50% of items, are 5% of value, right? So in this case, when we want to develop the measures for the inventory control, the 20% of items will be controlled uh, with high priority. So which means you need to have tight controls with, uh, in order to maintain the uh, accurate inventory records, doing inventory counts frequently, making sure the quality of these items is maintained and our demand forecast is accurate. For class B, which are 30% of items, around 15% of value. So we will kind of apply the normal, uh, what we call the normal uh, controls, right? Which means still maintaining good rec records, right? Doing the normal processing, but not as frequent as we do for class A items. So let's say if the frequency for class A items is on a weekly basis, for class B items, it could be uh, quarterly or every six months. On the other hand, item C, which will have, oh, sorry, the uh, class C, they will have very low priority and we want to have very loose controls. So doing inventory counts yearly or perhaps even pushing it to the vendor managed inventories, right? So based on this, let's go back to Excel. So we can say that we have these two items as classified as class A. So item two and item five. So 20% because we have 10 items in total, so 20% of items which are forming 78% of our total annual usage. Then we have next three items which are going up to 95%. So we can classify these as class B. So these are my class B of category B. And finally we have rest which are kind of 50% of items are only forming 5% of, of the usage, right, or annual usage. So these will be classified as class C. Now, as I said, this is just the basic principle. And when it comes to real life, you want to combine this information with your experience on the lead time experience with the suppliers, quality issues, and so on, right? So this will give you 
the the baseline control but further you can modify those controls based on the experiences and and other issues within the supply chain or the production process right so now if you have any questions on the abc analysis please do ask in the class there's one more example so i want you guys to work through it at your own pace and then you can compare your answers with with the with the standard excel answers which are provided right through blackboard so thank you very much if you have any questions feel free to reach me out